welcome back to our show. You know, we've been talking about contracts and really understanding what you're going to get out of a relationship, what you're going to get out of uh, uh, working with somebody. And, well, you know, if you're going to talk about contracts, you better have an attorney in the house, right? Kevin Britt joins us, attorney with the law offices of Kevin Britt Legal Services. Uh, Well, first of all, welcome, Kevin. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Pleased to be here. No, I'm, I'm pleased to have you. And, you know, we're going to get into focusing on the legal matters really involving condominium owners and homeowners associations, because I know that's you know, what you're really dedicated to. And uh, you just had an article from the King County Bar Association that came out. But before we get into that, what the contract piece? I mean, it's funny because if you don't work with a lawyer, contracts are like, yeah, here's like the three things. And if you do work with a lawyer, it's 45 pages and you're like, what? and this person shall be named this or this or this throughout the contract. And it's 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 very um, it's very different the way people choose to to you know embark into a, a relationship. Condominium declarations are not known for their brevity or readability. Uh, They are usually long 50-page documents that it often takes a lawyer to make heads or tails of, unfortunately. Uh, And those can be amended in ways to not make them be like that. But yes, a lot of times you have a document which is it hits the table with a thunk, you know, 50 pages thunk. Someone looks at it, they're, they're a, maybe never owned a condo before, maybe they have, but they don't read it. They don't analyze it. They don't get advice about what is, is there that might affect their day-to-day life or it might affect them in a big way in the future. And when you're buying a condo, I mean, you're buying into that contract, right? I mean, that is something you're... Like, it's not, hey, you get to live here, and it's your every third Tuesday, you're going to take out the garbage, whatever it may be, or mow the lawn. I mean, it's it's a major contract that you're buying into when you buy a condo. When you sign on the dotted line on that contract to buy a condominium unit, you're also signing saying that you agree to abide by its declaration, its bylaws, its rules, all of the governing documents that govern both the uh, ob- obligations of the association and the obligations of the owners. And chief among those, uh, perhaps, is the obligation to pay assessments. And that's what we'll be talking about a little bit, is that you are, do enter into a kind of financial and social marriage, almost, with this association and this group of owners as it changes over time. And you are bound to, in some instances, in some cases, pay large assessments to or look, that. Or you can't move your dog in with you, right? Pets. Uh, pets is a big one. Uh, leasing. Can you lease your condominium or not? That's a big one. Uh, can you smoke in your condominium or not? That's a big one. Again, very large issues in terms of lifestyle. So let's get into this because prospective condominium buyers, purchasers really do need to evaluate property, not just for its location, not just for how pretty the kitchen is, but for this 50-page document if they're buying a condo. Um, You talk about the four R's of purchasing a condo. Tell us a little bit about those. Sure, sure. Well, the first one and the one that is typically you see first is a resale certificate, which is provided by the current owner of the condominium unit to the prospective buyer. It provides just a general summary of what that condominium unit uh, unit's account looks like, whether it's delinquent, what the budget looks like, whether there's any uh, major anticipated assessments coming up or any anticipated repairs. It prov- talks about reserve studies. It provides information about that unit unit and about the association as a whole. And then so the first one is the, the reserve, uh, is the, uh, the resale certificate. You look at that, it gives you the snapshot. Then you go deeper. Then you say, well, let's look at the reserve study is the next R. The reserve study and the reserve account are the next things you look for to assess the financial health of the association as a whole, as an entity. If, let's say, for example, you have nothing, an association has nothing in its reserve account, and they're not required by law right now to have anything in their reserve account or put anything in their reserve account. All they're required to do is to have one and to have a reserve study done and updated every every uh, year. So if you look at a condominium association, it has nothing in its reserve account, and its, 20, its 30-year roof is on year 25, you will know that unless something happens where the uh, useful life of that roof is extended, you might be seeing a special assessment coming. But you have to have someone that can look through all these documents, can help you evaluate them, because again, res- reading a reserve study, reading a condominium declaration, reading a resale certificate, these are not easy things, and an attorney or an experienced real estate agent can help cut through the clutter of all these documents. Should you, you come I mean, so you come from an attorney background, you sure. know, we've talked about contracts, real estate contracts are pretty boilerplate. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of real estate agents who, 
I don't know if they even read the all 50 pages or, you know, maybe they look at some of the highlights. Is this something people should trust their real estate agent to do or should they find outside counsel before they re- so they really understand what's in it? Well, I I would say that they would always it would always be advisable or ideal, I should say, for them to get an attorney to take a look at it because this is a major purchase in their life. This is one of the major financial tra- transactions that most people will engage in in their life, one of maybe three or four. And it makes sense within a limited uh, amount of time, at least, to give uh, a, to get legal guidance as to what you're getting yourself into. One of the phrases I'm fond of in terms of a condominium context is look before you leap understand what you're getting into. What are you going to be your obligations once you sign on the bottom dotted line? What are you going to be, is going to be expected of you? What can, are there going to be the restrictions on you that weren't there before? Uh, all these things are, are relevant to whether you do sign on the dotted line or not. And you can, within a couple of hours, get good legal guidance from an attorney. And I think some real estate agents, perhaps not all, as you're saying, but some can also give you that insight as to, okay, this is what kind of a condominium association you're getting yourself into. So we talked about resale certificates and reserves. Right. What, are, what are the last two R's that you, you, you feel well, are real important? The last two R's and the records is, is the four is the third one. What and does it mean, records? Records. Well, records is the association's records. The association is required by law to keep certain records, including its governing documents, which you would, you know, as we've been talking about, you would want to and analyze in terms of what it kind of obligations it imposes on you, but also meeting minutes or another you know significant one. Uh, you want to in budgets as well. All of these are documents that the association is required to keep by law. And so a prospective buyer can look at that and assess what is going on. Did they talk about a major assessment at the last meeting? I mean, you know, if you're taking a look at that, even over the last couple of years, you can really get insight, in, again, as to what kind of, of an association you are thinking about buying into. And then the last one you mentioned, residence. Residence, yes. Well, do a this little is, door knocking, huh? I, well, I think it, you, it, oftentimes that is not going to be something that's done realistically. You're not going to actually you know, go in, in in person. But I threw it in there because I do think it is something that can be very informative. Is you know even if you if if you're having a couple of people that you do knock on their doors and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about buying next door. What can you tell me about living here? You know, it's a two-minute conversation, and it might be very illuminating. You know, I, I lived in a condo for a while, and it was a small one. And the, the the difference that I found between at least living in a small condominium, personalities really come out. And it's amazing how many people you're not friends with for a reason. And when you get in a homeowner's association meeting, you realize why you do not have glasses of wine with that person or beers after work. I mean, it's it's amazing the the difference of attitude and uh, per, that, that comes out in some of these meetings. And that would really be, I think, important if you talk into the residents like, oh, you know, what's the what's the TV show? Don't trust the bee down in apartment twenty three. Well, kind of the same thing I think could happen. It's the same thing. Boards have a, have personalities. I mean, some boards are more hardliners. Some boards are more easygoing, and that's something that is difficult to assess. You can you can use the meeting minutes, I think, to to realistically assess that. But having uh, talking to a couple of owners, there really isn't any substitute for that in terms of getting a sense of the culture, anyway, of what you're dealing with. So. Those are all ways of figuring out what kind of an association this is. Is this a good fit for me? Because, again, if it's not a good fit, what I see as the association's attorney are owners that then either, number one, they didn't get this kind of guidance so they have no idea what their obligations are, and then it's a rude awakening when they find out about them, or they actively go to war with the association, sometimes through attorneys, which I dislike, of course. I don't know. You probably get some more billable hours. I I am more <laughs> just, of a peaceful just, kind just, of guy. Just kidding, yes. Kevin. Just kidding. Uh, we are here with Kevin Britt with the law office of Kevin L. Britt Legal Services. Uh, so, Kevin, you know, overall, when you start looking at condos, we talked about resale certificates, reserves, records, and residents, those four R's. Is there is there amount of time that somebody should be really looking at this? I mean, is it is it a few hour process? Is it is, is there a 
Is it like, hey, man, this is going to take like three or four days of really, really diligent work? What should, how much time should somebody expect to spend on the four R's? Depends on what you and who you're working with. I mean, that is an argument, and I've heard it mentioned before on your show, is that's an argument for working with someone local who does this all the time because they, again, have seen these documents. They you know, really have a process that has been in place that they've performed many times. It can sometimes be done in as little as... I'd say two, three hour process of looking at the documents and then providing a written evaluation. It can be done in as little as that, depending on the parameters of what the client wants. Uh, you know, some attorneys you know, will say, look, I have a process and it's 10 hours. Uh, you know, that that is, is up to them. But it really depends on who you work with. And again, uh, for both, both individuals and for associations, when they're looking for attorneys, a lot of it comes down to attorneys are like any other professional. They all have their own personalities. They all have their own ways of doing things. I'll put it like that. Well, and, it would also seem that somebody who hasn't really done a lot of condo transactions, you know, and we talk about specialists and, and real estate agents being some of those specialists, mm-hmm. you know, somebody who's never done a condo or never helped somebody buy a condo, longer. it might not be the first, you might not want to be the guinea pig, I guess, going into that. And it might, it might be a good question for somebody to ask their agent, like, hey, how many condos have you sold? What is your process for reviewing a resale certificate? Sure. What is your process for understanding the reserves and records and and are you willing to go knock on those doors and understand the culture for me? Really, it, it comes down to, you know, kind of the caveat emptor. I mean, you know, just buyer beware. You know, try to, if you're going to engage in this major new transaction, you might as well get as much information as possible in advance. And as we were talking about with contracts, you, it's going to come down to the records generally. I mean, I, I'm realistic that a lot of people are not going to go knocking on doors. I mean, I'm just going to put it out there that they can, and it might be illuminating, but it's the records once again. It's the documents. It's it's Those are the other things that you have to evaluate and a professional can help you do that. Well, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us. Stick around for a few minutes. Uh, Heather Moore is going to come join us, and we're going to continue the discussion when we come back. You're listening to Brashonomics. Brashonomics. 